Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera. I am Dr. Sarina Abdullah, an Associate Professor at School of the Arts, USM. First and foremost, I would like to welcome all of you, the audience, to the first CREATE talk organized by USM CREATE. USM CREATE is a performance and events venue located at 21-35, Bangunan UAB, Kat Lebuh, China, right in Georgetown. It is a new space under University of Science Malaysia that promotes an environment for the arts and talented entrepreneurs. As COVID lingers, we bring to you a series of Create Talk via online at usm.create Facebook as our first inaugural activity. Without further ado, I would like to introduce our first presenter today, Dr. Elham Shafi'i. Elham Shafi'i is an industry fellow at the Fine Arts Department, School of the Arts, USM. She is an artist, paper maker, and researcher whose life and career have spanned across geographical boundaries. Alham completed her studio-based PhD in Fine Arts at University of Science Malaysia, examining, examining the role of melancholia in creative life. In 2017, she relocated to the United Arab Emirates, where she currently resides and continues her studio practice. Her art has been featured in various regional and international ex exhibitions, Alham is also the co-founder and co-editor of Contemporary Identities, an international online art magazine and gallery. Recently, she founded IE Projects, which is an online art foundation. She has initiated and continues to develop curatorial projects that connect practitioners of contemporary art across the world. I would like to invite Dr. Alham to speak and share her presentation. Hello, <clears throat> hello everyone. And uh, hello, Dr. Sarana. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to be here today. And uh, uh, I'm really happy uh, to be here and share my uh, experience and my artistic uh, life with uh, everyone. I would like to thank the USM Create and the School of Arts, University of Science Malaysia for organizing this uh, event. And uh, so just, um, I can uh, start talking um, about uh, my art and share my uh, artistic life. Uh, but maybe I can share my uh, uh, PowerPoint here. Okay, so. <clears throat> I wanted to be an artist ever since uh, I was a little girl. To fulfill the dream, I joined arts classes ever since I was a teenager. To follow my dream, in 2003, I entered the School of Arts at Science and Culture University in Tehran, Iran. That was a great opportunity for me to practice art and get to know more about the art world and other artists' practice. I was at the university to study my bachelor for four years. There I realized I'm not becoming an artist just because I am an art student. I needed to work harder and study harder in order to fulfill my dream. Those days I realized being an artist is not easy at all. In order to become one, I should allow art enter every aspect of my life. I prepared myself to work hard and make sacrifices to achieve success. In 2007, I graduated from their art school and it was the end of the line to be a happy student. 
I ended up lost in my mind in the city of Tehran without a proper studio. I just wanted to be an artist and nothing else. I managed to have a shared studio apartment with a few other friends, a place big enough to produce art and sleep there. I tried to visit most of the exhibitions in Tehran at that time, clicked most of the art books I had access to, talked to artists and visit their studios if I had a chance, and whatever else possibly I could do at that time to be more involved. Those were not enough for me at that time, and I wanted to know more and explore more. For that reason, I decided to study my uh, MA in Malaysia to find more about art in the other part of the world and get to know about um, other culture rather than just my culture. I started my MA in Fine Arts at the School of Arts, University of Science Malaysia in 2010 and I had a chance to learn research. And I should confess, research helped me a lot to find out more about my position as an artist. I was doing practice-based research and uh, that gave me a chance to somehow uh, do research within myself as well and find out about my abilities in art. My research topic for my MA was a research on the potential of local natural fibers to produce handmade papers for drawing, painting, and printmaking. This research investigated the potential of natural fibers available locally in Malaysia to produce a specialized handmade art papers for drawing, painting, and printmaking. The outcomes of the project were a series of fine art papers made uh, from banana, Chantan or pork ginger and menkirai or um, poison pitch plants. The handmade papers were evaluated through performing laboratory tests and assessed by several well-known Malaysian artists to compare their performance against commercial fine art papers. I completed my MA in 2013 and in 2014, I started my PhD in fine arts at the School of Arts USM. The significance of melancholia in art was a topic I worked on during my PhD. And as you can see, this is totally different topics. Uh, so uh, I, for my master's, I just wanted to, uh, to find out more about the country, about the culture, you know, just it was new for me and uh, get more skills, which I didn't have. And for my PhD, I wanted to search about my art and about my own self. It was a practice-based research that examined the role of melancholia in creative life. It provided analysis uh, of the mechanism through which melancholia function as a productive loneliness or solitude that cultivates originality of thoughts and authentic subjectivity. The research outcomes were manifested in a body of studio work accompanied by a written, uh, written uh, thesis. And uh, I finished my PhD in 2017. After my PhD, I moved to the United Arab Emirates, where I currently reside and continue my studio practice. Uh, as Dr. Sarana mentioned, my art has been featured in various regional and international exhibitions. Currently, I am the co-founder and co-editor at Contemporary Identities International Online Art Magazine and Gallery. Uh, recently, uh, I founded IE Project, uh, which is an online art foundation. I was appointed as industrial fellow at the School of Art USM recently. And uh, moreover, I have initiated to continue uh, and develop the curatorial projects to connect practitioners of contemporary art across the world. Here, I, uh, I would like to, uh, before I start um, uh, to talk more about my art, I would like to share some experience uh, about uh, this, uh, you know, just the current um, situation with COVID. Uh, I'd like to share my experience during the pandemic. Uh, being a full-time artist has been challenging forever. The pandemic most a considerable impact 
was that it forced the cancellation of several art shows at galleries, especially internationally. I spent the whole year preparing for a solo exhibition in Italy, which has been postponed uh, to an unforeseeable future. Furthermore, my workshops, art class, curatorial projects either canceled or postponed due to the uh, dreadful virus. All of these opportunities disappeared overnight. Nonetheless, I believe the show must go on. I should say uh, COVID-19 didn't slow down my own creative impulses. It did affect my life in many ways, but uh, I have tried to adopt to the new normal. I took every chance to be engaged to the community and uh, to put myself out there virtually. I participated uh, to a few online exhibitions, artist residency, workshops, and art talk. I also curated a few uh, online exhibitions. I expanded my online platform and gave chance to many artists worldwide to show their works through that. Uh, uh, yes. Have you changed your PowerPoint slides yet? No, I actually, you know, just the PowerPoint uh, slides I'm going to change when, you know, just um, uh, I'm going to talk about my different series of uh, artwork. All right, you just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, like, please go ahead, please go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> and now I'd like to, uh, to share um, uh, my artistic journey. And uh, in the most general and uh, fundamental sense, my art functions as a sort of diary or journal that notates my daily history with different techniques, materials, and processes. My art tells my story and in doing so attempts to evoke emotions in the audience. My approach to art making is governed by the aesthetic of effect, which aims to elicit empathy uh, within the audience, connecting them to what is being depicted through feelings and intuitions rather than rational thinking. As a form of journal, uh, my art making is also a way for me to try to make sense of things. So my art functions as an allegory of metaphor to help me make sense of the world I live in. Metaphor uses symbolism and comparison to strengthen a point, and it also acts to represent my certain ideas or thoughts, depending on my emotions, ideas, or experiences. My art functions beyond being imageries. Perhaps it will bring audiences to tear, make them smile, or remind them of something they had almost forgotten. Uh, I would love to talk about my um, early uh, or my influences um, in art. Uh, I can start with uh, Vincent Mango and uh, his unique life inspired me to become active in art. I found beauty, persona, individuality and style in his art. Egon Schiele's line, color and his ex uh, expressionist charmed me. As part of my experience, I admire Francis Bacon for his unique expressionist style of painting. Marlene Dumas' portraits affected my vision. Her portraits do not represent people, but that emotional state that one could be in. The way Yuri Kusama immersed the whole person into her accumulations, obsessions, and reputations influenced me. As an artist, it was something I had to discover on my own through search. And that's why searching and looking and being curious leads me to places where I found answers that I can apply to my life and to make art that comes from deep inside me. Their lines, colors, and spaces affect my inside because I found them real and honest. That is why it works. Contemporary art is a dynamic combination of materials, method, concepts, and subjects. That's why contemporary art provides the chance for me to be an experimental artist. 
I am interested, interested in exploring new ideas using new mediums and techniques. I can say I am an experimental artist. Experimental usually suggests a more uh, explicit desire to expand the boundaries of the art in terms of materials or techniques. I love to play with the ideas and the materials and adopt chance uh, procedure in the uh, expectation that something of value will result. To me, experimental is a trial run, not the finished work, something transitional. I am concerned, not with a strictly technical experimentation, but to argue for an analogy between the process of representation as a series of experiments with different ideas and theories. I want my artwork to be different from all the other artworks around me. I desire that my results be unusual and unfamiliar. Contemporary art is complex to me. It sets me free to explore and encounter unexpected results and ideas something that go beyond the boundaries uh, and definition of what art can be. Art is fundamentally a lifestyle. Art gives meaning to my life and help me understand the world. It allows me to have a deeper understanding of my emotions. It increases my self-awareness and also allows me to be open to new ideas and experiences. Art helps me to connect with my inner self. Art enables me to look within and to listen to myself, realize who I am and what I care about. It connects me to my thoughts, feelings, perception, and my outer realities and experiences. With all in mind, I can position myself as a full life artist. Okay, for this session, uh, I just uh, want to talk uh, about my most recent uh, project, because if I just wanted to <laughs> share everything, it could be, you know, just more than this time we have already here. And um, I would like to start uh, with uh, uh, We Are Lost series. <clears throat> This is a series of painting and uh, stitches to represent my complex notion of loss. The notion of loss has been an integral part uh, of my artistic temperament. We enter the world as foreigners and forever submit ourselves uh, to a profound sense of not belonging. Our existence will always be structured by loss and unbelonging which entail our eternal desire to belong. This series uh, showed previously in a solo exhibition at Saya Art Gallery in Tehran, Iran in 2019. And also um, it was part of a group exhibition at Tashkil um, Studio Gallery in uh, Dubai in 2019. So uh, this slide shows my studio where I was preparing for the solo um, exhibition. So, and this is the... Uh, The works, and uh, as you can see, uh, just uh, I painted, and then I cut, I traced the painting, uh, painting, uh, and then I placed them on uh, another on prime canvas. But this series contains two different uh, types of portraits. One, as you saw before previously, and this also a part of this series. Okay. Um, I produced another series of work intends to express the notion of loss and belonging entitled Violence Before Violence. By embodying the human navel as a mark, a trauma that is inscribed on each of us. After a mother pushes a baby out of herself, the baby exists from the mother's word and falls into another. The midwife or father then cuts uh, umbilical cord that once connected the baby to its mother's placenta. All of us begin uh, with this violence, with the cut that individuates. We carry the mark 
of division or loss to, uh, at the center of our body. The navel, that is the ordinary mark of the loss. And that is to remind us we have been lost ever since we first became our own bodies. The eye comes into existence through difference by being marked out a bit split from others. In everyday life, we are marked away from others through our names that differentiate one from another. My name is the difference that divides me away from all bodies that is not me. The navel is thus the original division, the original mark of differences that divides my body away from another, away from the mother. The cut of umbilical cord is just like the slicing into the letter M from mother. She is now my first and beloved other. My work in this series um, uh, is a series of imprints of naval, uh, of actual individuals uh, during an artist residency in Tehran, collected and registered onto fabrics. Each of these imprints is accompanied by stitching. Uh, let me change the slide. As you can see in this slide, so just is the the, um, the body and then the paint on it. And this is uh, the outcome of it. Uh, so uh, this is showed previously uh, as an installation performance project at the Aria Artist Residency in Tehran, Iran, in 2019. Uh, with the coronavirus outbreak in whole world, human beings suggested to be in isolation and keep social distance uh, for the matter of individual survival. It made me to evolve this project to the next level. I brought the lost individuals together with distance. I cut them more fabric and paste uh, those on bigger fabrics and keeping the distance between the individuals. Each of these imprints is accompanied by stitching and filled with polyester filling, which is a further marking of the mark and names the fabric. To me, this action uh, is a new cut that individuates. The eye came into existence again by being split from others, not just the mother. Okay, this is the result uh, of the evolved board. Okay, here I'm going to um, talk about another series, uh, Toys RB, which is a combination between paintings and sculpture to represent a complex notion of objecthood. I intend to create a physical context for the viewers to experience a sense of objects through the painting in a form of soft sculptures or toys that focuses on a spectacle of human person as an object. I use the toy concept because a toy is an item that is used in play. Playing with toys is a way of training young children for life in society. Thus, we continue our adulthood as living toys in a sense that we move about and exist in the world uh, as objects. Um, among objects in order to be a subjective subjectivity or identity to ourselves and to others. This series supposed to be shown in a form of solo exhibition in Italy, but unfortunately uh, have been canceled due to uh, the pandemic. I showed a few works from this series uh, in a different group exhibition in Australia, Iran and Hungary. And I've tried to play around with this um, idea or with this um, toys or soft sculptures. Uh, so, um, you know, just, um, I also um, produced a series of stop motions, like experimental stop motion. I would like to play here.
And uh, now I would like to talk about um, another series, Effort of Survival. Uh, one of the emotional responses to the uncer uncertainties of the pandemic was baking bread. During the shock of the uh, panic buying, the one item everyone wanted to get was flour. We cannot stop eating bread. Bread is a fundamental human tool for sustenance, and it has been around since many years. Bread is the most popular wheat product. It was believed wheat contains the mystery of life and death, and thus it became a sacred plant. Bread has played an important role in our survival. It is one of the most in, intrinsic food sur uh, survival mechanisms we have ever developed as a species. This project is an outcome of my baking experiences during the time of pandemic. Baking led me to the will to live, the will to pleasure, and the will to connection. This project is an installation based uh, on my marked baking sheets uh, with the trace of my baked bread. I took pictures of my baking sheets and print them on A4 size papers. This piece uh, was a tabletop installation. I put 10 sets uh, of my baking sheets um, and uh, that reminds of the 10 months uh, of having coronavirus in the UAE at that time uh, when I was just proposing this, uh, showing this for the exhibition. Each of uh, these sets contains seven baking sheets, which represent the seven days of a week. Furthermore, I put a whole bunch of empty sheets uh, for my or for our effort of survival for future days of struggle. Uh, this work, this project, uh, showed uh, in uh, Tashkil, Dubai, in 2020. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Women Iran series. I proposed this uh, series of work for Behram Bakhtia Foundation in Monaco in 2020. I tried to express the theme of Women Iran through a series of abstract textile artwork. Textiles are linked to human life, essential to its survival and powerful signifier of its existence. Fabric can be a metaphor for gender and power, sexuality and reproduction. Women uh, hold societies together as they weave and mend to ensure the health, security and well-being of families and entire communities. That is why fabric is quite symbolic of womanhood. And in my art course, in this series of installation that feature different kinds of textiles, such as um, velvet, satin, mesh, uh, netting, and uh, other types, to create a vibrant atmosphere. I intend to invite viewers to discover multiple layers of meanings expressed in the form and colors applied uh, and the kinds of fabrics used. My work concentrates uh, on the modern time of women in Iran, but also in other locations. Both confronts uh, and interweaves with cultural attitudes and traditional practices. The conflicts, agitation, and new concepts of life and lifestyle constitute the base of my creative express expression as I attempt to mold stories and images of these emergent um, experiences by employing use, disuse, and discarded materials to create form of aesthetic character. I show uh, a different aspects of the woman through language of abstraction. I explore the norms and rules of women by simplifying the word to visualize the versatility of modern Iranian women and their active role at home and at their society and uh, uh, at the family. 
uh, as herself, as part of her family, and as an active member of the society. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Monster uh, in conversation now. Uh, uh, these days, uh, coronavirus outbreak is affected on every aspect of our, uh, on our lives. 1947, Camus wrote in his existential novel, The Flood, about virus that destroys half the population of an ordinary town. In Camus' philosophy, we are, our, we are all already living through a flood. That is a widespread, silent, uh, invisible disease that may kill any of us at any time and destroy the lives we assume were solid. Our exposure to COVID-19 is at the heart of Camus' view that our lives are fundamentally on the edge of what we term the absurd. Camus speaks to us in our own times because he correctly signs of human nature and knew about the fundamental and absurd uh, vulnerability in us that we cannot usually bear to remember. Camus knew, as we don't, that everyone has inside it himself this flock because no one in the world can ever be immune. Flood or COVID-19 is a sus suspiciability to sudden death and events that can render our lives meaningless, but nature is one of the things make life worth enduring. Master in Conversation is an ongoing project for why a series of absurdist uh, podcasts based on the dialogue between human and monster of land to determine the importance of nature in humans' life during the time of pandemic. I used uh, a specialized device uh, that translates uh, electrical uh, variation in plants into musical pitches. The result is a continuous stream of sound that gives us a sonic window into the sacred life of plants. I use Mansara's voice to converse with the invited human or guest uh, and create a series of absurd dialects. Uh, this project supported by our Jamil Research and Practice Platform, Dubai in 2020. It is going to be a part of a group exhibition uh, in Germany in 2021. So I just would like to um, uh, share some of, uh, it might be interesting to you uh, to listen to these noises. Okay, uh, I hope you could hear this clearly. And that was the uh, part of the Monsara's noises I would like to share with you. Okay, uh, <clears throat> uh, I have produced a three-piece installation based on Rumi's um, startling image of himself in his uh, poetry. Rumi was a 13th century Persian poet, and he said, I was raw, I was cooked, and I was burned, which is an indication of how Rumi felt when he, when he journeyed through the stages of the lower self or ego uh, and beyond. When we are in experience, we are raw in our understanding of the world. It is through the sum of experiences and knowledge that we can learn to exercise some judgment in attempting uh, to solve problems in any circumstance. <clears throat> My recent work uh, revolves around the poem mentioned above by putting up three human mannequin heads to represent uh, the three stages of human self or ego journey. In order to show these different stages, I painted the human's facial components with ink on canvas, 
uh, in a way they could express the raw, cooked, and burned. This installation piece is an uh, indication of how it may feel through the stages of the lower self or evil and beyond in our time. I traced the paintings and installed on the mannequin heads uh, with pins. The usage of pins allude being held in place, yet uh, only for a time being, towards another stage that is yet to come. <clears throat> Um, I would like to share this, uh, this piece, uh, which is a collab uh, collaborative project has been planned to perform with another artist friend, uh, based uh, on the theme art is there. This project is a combination of a video performance and internet art. This piece aims to eliminate the statement of art is there. In this collaborative project, my friend from Germany and I from the United Arab Emirates are going to connect online to each other and to the gallery's uh, audiences through uh, any sort of like Zoom meeting, Google Meet, or this kind of meeting plat uh, platform. Uh, the whole meeting will be projected through a screen uh, in the gallery's space. Gallery's audiences can watch up through the screen and listen to our conversation with a provided headphone. The audiences can even join the online meeting and participate to our uh, conversation while we are <coughs> discussing our thoughts and ideas. This project is a conceptual uh, piece based on conversation and nobody awards uh, are going to be produced. The aim of this project is to depict Hegel and Danto's theories on the uh, end of art. Hegel suggests that the end of art is linked uh, to its absorption into philosophy. And here we try to do so through our conversation. Furthermore, Danto has argued that art ended with the uh, Andy Warhol's Brillo box. This piece, like Warhol's Brillo box, sit uh, tantalizingly and the boundaries between object art and conceptual art. This live conversation are art, while any other live conversation on social media are not. As Warhol's work, this project also tries to show that the essence of art couldn't be discovered at the uh, perceptual level, but at the intellectual. The proposed project tries to show the transformation of art into philosophy and thus implied a complete liberation of art. And in turning into philosophy, one might say that art had come to a certain natural end. Okay, so uh, I just could share uh, this. Uh, for today and um, yeah that's all <laughs> and uh, Dr. Sarna if you or uh, the audiences they have uh, some questions I'm ready to answer thank you Dr. Ilham for a very interesting presentation that starts off with a very lengthy um sharing on um, your own background and how you came about to doing you know uh, producing artworks in the first place it was a long sharing i mean uh, at least in terms of the introduction which is which is uh, you know which we hardly get um you know the kind of narrative that you bring into the discussion um especially in terms of the context of the art making so uh i am um interesting when uh you know i'm interested in which uh the statement that um you know you mentioned earlier uh in which um you know maybe you can sort of like expand this a little bit further you're know, looking at um the aesthetics of effect yeah the mm -hmm. aesthetics of effect which aims to elicit empathy within the audience connecting them to what is being depicted through feeling and intuition rather than rational thinking. So I think this is a very interesting concept, okay, in which 
the general audience might not get it. You know, uh, you know, based on your um, you know experience exhibiting the works that you do um, across um, you know uh, in many many sites and spaces, um, how you know do you um, have any response? So can you share with us the response that you get as audience encounter your work? <clears throat> Yeah, as I mentioned, um, this is, you know, just uh, I always, ever since I started painting or, you know, I started to to be an artist, you know, there's no start to it, but, you know, just that uh, I realized this, I just try to, to do research about myself and about my uh, my work, especially uh, during my PhD, because, you know, just the topic was uh, something uh, very much, you know, interesting to me. And as I said, research helped me to find out a lot about myself and my artwork. So uh, that's part of, you know, just um, uh, part of that. Um, I became conscious about this. And um, uh, even from before, you know, just when I exhibit my works, the audience is always, they came to me, you know, and then they share their, their feelings or they share their, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, just how they, how their emotion is or, you know, how they get connected to this. But it was very interesting because sometimes, you know, just uh, they came to me and they said, just said there is something they cannot, they cannot say. But there's some feelings they, they can feel when they look at my words, but they cannot explain what that is. So that's why, you know, just I also mentioned, you know, just uh, it might be something the audience has experienced before, you know, as all of us, you know, just human beings, we experience a lot of uh, similar things. But sometimes we are, um, we just forget or we don't really pay attention to. But when I deeply pay attention and bring it to my artwork, and that becomes like, you know, just uh, interesting to some uh, audiences. But some of them, they really uh, know, uh, you know, just they can tell, um, oh, they're sad or they're happy with it, or, you know, just they can feel, they know where the feeling comes from. But some of them know, but they just can't explain they have something similar, but they cannot say where it comes from. And that is very interesting to me. Okay, in, uh, because I, I think in a sense that a very mature audience or, um, you know, audience that is very well versed or, or, you know, have many, many times entered the galleries, uh, especially internationally, they would probably get, get it, you know, um, mm -hmm. with this kind of works, because like um, the kind of art making that we do today is, you know, changing, um, especially in terms of contemporary art. So I was just wondering if, um, you know, sometimes when in, in, in a, in a, in a, in countries in which, um, the exposure to art is quite limited, um, you know, people are still, um, have the huge emphasis, uh, or, um, the, the, the perception or the anticipation of art will still be the aesthetics, the skills of the artists and all that. Yeah. But, um. I don't know. I mean, uh, how, how is it, um, you know, in, in terms of um, when um, you exhibit this work in UAE, for example, um, the, does it, you know, uh, receive a lot of like good um, receptions by the audience? Or... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Actually, you know, just uh, I can, uh, that, that's like, you know, just it's going to be a very interesting conversation. <laughs> you know, just the, uh, um, I can say, you know, just a lot of things um, uh, changed in me ever since I lived here. Because here, you know, just the art exposure is like really high. And so just there's a lot of galleries and is international, you know, just uh, and a lot of happening. And people are trying to see artworks. As you, as you mentioned, you know, just then people, you know, just uh, they are somehow trained. You know, just even visually, you know, just when they go, keep going like ordinary people, they keep going to the exhibition and somehow, you know, just, just read the statement on the, you know, just the wall sticker. So that gives them some, you know, just training somehow. So that's why, as you mentioned, that is very, uh, you know, just um, interesting. So just because um, that will happen, you know, just people or the audience, they will be trained, even though they are like just ordinary people. But, you know, just the, the way they get the meaning or they can, you know, just uh, find the source of it. Um, that is much more, you know, just, uh, yeah, it's happening. 
All right, we have one question from Facebook uh, by our audience, Dr. Mumtaz uh, Begumbeker. She asks, how have women, women identified themselves uh, with your artwork in terms of femininity and also their quote-unquote loss of identities? So I think maybe uh, like, um, maybe you can use the example in your work. Um, the one that sort of like attracts me was like the one with the textile hanging. Yes. Uh, so that, um, you know, just um, as I mentioned always, you know, just I wanted to be honest in my work and in my life. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's, that's a place I always search for meaning. Okay. And I'm a, I'm a woman, of course. So just, uh, I know, um, their struggles, I know the feelings, I know, you know, just, uh, everything because I'm a woman, so I can feel, I can, you know, just, so, uh, you know, and, uh, based on that honesty, I always looking for, and I always try to, um, to, to show through my words. Uh, so I think, you know, just, uh, based on that, uh, up of ethics, so just, you know, just. The audience, they can, you know, just um, they can they can find uh, the connections, but um, you know, just uh, at the really beginning of my work before I enter, uh, before I go to Malaysia, even before I enter the university, you know, just for my bachelor, uh, I struggle a lot as a as a woman in uh, living in Iran. Uh, so uh, you know, just the experiences, or you know, just um, some of the limitations. You know, just it was not something you know, just uh, I was uh, looking for. That's why a lot of series of words I have uh, is about women. I never painted a man. Or maybe that's interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm a feminist, or um, you know, but because uh, I think it goes back again. Uh, to that honesty and you know just to connection with myself because i just can't speak for myself okay and uh i think my aunt also does the same and uh, yeah and i think women they can really um find the connection uh with you know just with the sort of womanhood um i'm going to you know just present through my words I hope that has, um, you know, slightly explained, um, you know, or answered the question by our audience here. Um, uh, in the last quote they showed me just now is that uh, art is dead. Okay, I, I'm quite interested with that. Okay, because like you mentioned works by philosophers, right? Like Hegel, yes. Dysko and all that, right? But how do you see this in the position of... Um, um, uh let's see okay. uh, you you mentioned that hegel suggested at the end of art is linked to this or to its absorption into philosophy and later on um you know by referring to another work by danto for example you know in which the art ended with and the warhol's brillo box okay you know frankly i i, I thought that in my class <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the thing that how how do you sort of like position this within this so called um you know new media you know new media in which you know artworks doesn't have to be in its conventional forms you know in paintings or drawings but you know having videos internet connectivity uh, you know WhatsApp you know IG and all that um you know as a part of how how do you sort of like position your work within um the the philosophers who had dealt with um, you know, um, with the technology, for example, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, just because um, I just um, uh, share most of the works, you know, just the uh, the series I produce is just after COVID, <laughs> so you know, just during like, like almost past year. So that has a lot of impact in everyone's life. So just uh, including me, and as you can see, you know, just. Um, uh, yeah, you know, just for example, Warhol during uh, his time, so just use the uh, Brillo box, you know, just and represent as the um, just as an artwork, as an art piece. So, and that's how you know, just uh, Danto came and say just art is dead because you know just to show those just boxes. Like what it came in, it was like uh, for this uh, work, you know, just we had this topic 
of um, uh, art is that I mean, just be design creators. So just based on this topic, this based on this theme or title, we tried, uh, my friend and I, we tried to, you know, just to play around with it and create some work can fit with this, uh, within this uh, theme. Uh, so just, it came to our mind because a lot of live uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, I don't know, just different types of social um, medias or, you know, just, especially since last year, it became like really, you know, just um, everywhere. And um, maybe this year is a little bit like less, but last year it was too much. You know, just wherever you just you open Instagram, it was just lies. I invited you to the lies, you know, just. Um, so that's how, you know, just based on the time we are living in, it came to our mind. So just maybe we can use this platform or this format to, you know, just maybe somehow in comparison to uh, to that Brillo box, you know, so just this lives on social media are not art, but this one, because we are putting in a gallery space and then we thought about it and then we had a philosophy uh, or theory behind, so it can represent an art piece, even though it doesn't have anybody, any body of artwork. So it's just going to be a screen and just internet and one headphone, you know, just, um, the audience can uh, join the, the conversation. I think the work is quite interesting. To the recent, um, have you seen the latest uh, work by Yoko Ono, uh, the 24 hours performance, uh, to see the sky? That is quite mm -hmm. recent, in which everybody was like showing their screens uh, via, you know, via, via the, the Zoom, the Zoom meeting. And yes. in which everybody was like showing the sky, so that's happening, you know, uh, uh, you know, at the same time all of, around the world or whoever participated in, in that, in that performance. So, yeah, uh, but you don't see yourself as a new media artist. You don't, I presume. No, I just, as I said, I'm an experimental artist. You know, okay. I like to, uh, I like to try different things. You know, just I still think I am a painter. <laughs> you know. But, you know, just uh, sometimes, you know, just I believe uh, different is this is like an example, different language, you know, gives, you know, just gives you more ability to connect. Right. So I like to experiment. You, you saw, you know, just I have uh, installation, I have paintings, soft sculpture and uh, sound art, like new media art somehow, you know, just I try to. Uh, to experiment different things and speak with a different language whenever it's necessary or whenever, you know, just I have to know something, you know, just I go and learn. So. Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have any other questions so from uh, Facebook? If you have any questions from the audience, the audience on Facebook, you can put or, you know, write your questions on the chat uh, or the comment boxes on our, uh, on our live stream uh, at USM uh, Korea, okay, so that we can uh, raise or convey uh, the questions to our presenter today. So it's not an easy to have uh, both of us physically, quote unquote, physically in yeah. USM Korea, <laughs> though technically it's still virtu virtually, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So uh, let's see if we have any more uh, questions. But uh, okay, we have about uh, like five minutes left. Uh, maybe you can speak more about the um, your mark making to your baking sheets, your mark making mm -hmm. to the baking sheets. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's sort of like, um, uh, you, you, because you don't sell, see yourself as a feminist, but, and yet your subject matter falls along what we learn or are historically learned as, you know, subject matter that feminist art is sort of like always posits, you know, um, we're talking here about works during the 50s and 60s of uh, feminist studies uh, in Euro America. So, um, but can you explain more about those works, especially, um, you know, as you were doing it, okay, I, either intentionally or unintentionally during um, COVID, okay, because you sort of like find out, okay, you know, the flour, the bread is very important. Yes, in Malaysia too, the first thing 
uh, when MCO happens last year, uh, the gardenia bread was really out of stock. Okay, so that you know, it, 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 people uh, you know sort of like you know um, you know the the fact that we love gardenia bread goes viral. Okay, and yet you yourself you know because maybe your public speaking skills and all that you start to bake the breads. Okay, maybe you can uh, you know speak more about that. Actually, I love baking. I love cooking and baking. So just that kind of, uh, I believe, you know, just that's kind of, um, uh, I don't know, uh, art somehow, you know, just um, because I enjoy doing it and I, I like to be creative. And uh, baking is not just something, you know, just I started during the COVID. Uh, I just once in a while I like to, to do the baking. But as you said, you know, just... <laughs> Suddenly, gardenia bread was out of stock in Malaysia. You know, everywhere else, you know, just people that were panic buying. And then, uh, so at the beginning of this uh, virus, uh, you know, just uh, spread, we didn't know how dangerous it is or how, you know, just me, myself, I didn't want to buy bread from uh, stores because I thought it might have uh, some virus. Okay, so that happened to, to me, you know, just because we were not really familiar at the beginning. So that happened to me, you know, just about a lot of um, packs of uh, flour. And so I start baking like uh, on a regular basis for whatever we need, you know, just the everyday life. And uh, I just bake and keep in freezer and so just to use it whenever we want to have. And uh, somehow, you know, just when I started that and uh, I had that in mind, you know, just whatever we are doing during this um, corona as uh, you know just the pandemic i have to have some memories from that you know because we were not sure at the beginning how we are not sure yet uh, you know just how long this is gonna take so but at that time i thought okay it might be for a few months so just i have to have some sort of like memories uh to share or to have for future you know to remind me of this you know this um time of difficulties. And that's why when I start baking for that time, I kept all of the baking sheets, you know, because it made a mark. And uh, so I kept all of it because I knew I want to do something with it. And then it was an exhibition, I mean, like an exhibition um, uh, in Tashkil in Dubai. So, uh, and it, the title of the exhibition was a uh, COVID conversation. Okay, so, and then, you know, it came to my mind, it occurred to me, okay, so why not I just uh, use this uh, sheets I already collected and show there. As you can see, I had like a, like a, like a tray, like an oven tray and put a lot more like a, you know, just uh, baking sheets, um, empty one, you know, for the days to come. And so that's how the idea and, you know, just everything came. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I think the, the exhibition was COVID conversation. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a very, very interesting, um, you know, exhibition title. Yes. It, and a lot of interesting works. It was in there because it was a group exhibition and most of the, the artists from Emirates, uh, you know, just whoever mm -hmm. the exhibitor, they produce their works either about COVID or during the lockdown. So the, mm -hmm. the exhibition was very interesting, by the way. Is it a physical exhibition? Or yeah, it, it is, is physical. Yes. physical. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, an hour has just passed us. Okay. Uh, very fast. Yeah. But I would like to conclude with um, the quote um, that I'm taken from your, your, your presentation. Yeah. When you refer to cameras, okay, for example, um, quote unquote, Camus speaks to us, and I find this very, very pertinent at this moment because in Malaysia, in these few days, there were cases of suicidal, okay, due to stress, depression, due to COVID, and all that. Okay, so I would like to quote back uh, your presentation, in which you say that Camus speaks to us in our times, okay, because you are referring to Camus' novel, The Plague, and all that. Okay. So Camus uh, speaks to us in our times because he correctly sized up human nature and knew about the fundamental and absurd vulnerab vulnerability in us that we cannot usually bear to remember. So that I find that that quote is very, um, you know, um, um, not interesting or pertinent, but touching in a sense, okay, touching in a sense. Okay? 
so and you further said that Camus knew as we do not that everyone has inside it himself this plague because no one in the world can ever be immune so I think uh, by by quoting those um, you know phrases I would like to conclude our presentation today and I would like to thank um, to give my you know greatest thanks uh, to Dr Alham Shafi'i for spending an hour with us keep sharing and discussing her artistic journey and um, her experience during the COVID times and and also to be a part of the industry fellow at School of the Arts USM. And also, I would like to thank um, Create Talk and also USM Create for um, the inaugural activity at um, USM Create through um, an online skill. So, and I also would like to thank uh, the dean or the dean of School of the Arts, Dr. Mumtaz Begum, and also the management of Industry Science Malaysia for us um, for letting us having uh, our session today. And also, of course, the least, um, last but not least, our um, committed viewers on Facebook, okay, who has spent their one hour of a Saturday afternoon with us uh, today to hear Dr. Alham speak about her work. Okay, thank you very much. And we hope, um, you know, to all of us, all of you today, please like, share, and follow USM Create, and um, stay tuned for our next. Um, online programs and also physical programs if uh, COVID situation allows us to be back, um, you know, in physical form, <laughs> physically back in the in the building. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.